Hello, everyone. Welcome. We are so thrilled to have you in this session today. You can hop in the chat, tell us who you are, let us know where you're coming from. We love to see our global representation taking place today. Um, I am Angela from the Seesaw team. Welcome to Seesaw Rewind, Back to the Basics to Share Student Learning led by four amazing women today, Sophia, Robin, Sarah, and Tracy. And during this session, we encourage you to, of course, take advantage of the chat, go into the Q&A, and at the top right, you will see all of those options available to you. At the end, we will save time for questions for the presenter. So feel free to ask those questions anytime throughout the session, and we will spend time at the end with those questions. Also, you will notice there is a tab labeled for handouts. So those will be available to you once we have started. And if you like closed captions, you can select that CC on the top right and choose your preferred language. And make sure you stick around to the very end because we have some Seesaw gear to give away to two lucky winners in this session. And I hope you are participating in a little gamification throughout this conference. Make sure you are chatting, go into the networking tab to learn more about how you earn all these amazing points. And I am gonna hand it over to these amazing presenters. Let's get started. All right, good morning. Uh, <laughs> Let's see, I'm, I'm, it's going to take me a second to take the wheels and figure out how to navigate here. Um, welcome. We're super excited uh, to present to you our Seesaw Rewind session. Um, we'll just quick introduce ourselves and then dive in. My name is Tracy Piltz. I'm in Billings, Montana. I am a former kindergarten teacher and um, now I'm a tech integration specialist. I work with kindergarten through third grade teachers at my school here in Billings. I'm Robin Schumacher, a former second grade teacher as of last year, but now jumping back into reading intervention. And I've been mm -hmm. teaching K through two for about 21 years. I'm Sarah Melko. I am coming to you from Wisconsin. I am a former first and second grade teacher, and I am now a digital learning specialist. Hi, everyone. I'm Sophia Garcia Smith. I uh, work right outside of Chicago, Illinois, in a suburb. Um, I am excited. I have been teaching for 26 years, I think, this year. And uh, my new position is library media specialist. I taught uh, pre-K through second for 20-ish years. And uh, we're just so happy to be able to kind of come together like this. Uh, the four of us have been using Seesaw, um, we say since the, the olden days, um, when Seesaw was, was brand new. We all connected on social media, on Twitter, um, just sharing our, you know, love for Seesaw, love for EdTech, and um, that connection has just blossomed into a friendship um, where we continue to just be able to connect and share ideas. Um, that then help us support the teachers and kids we work with. So we're really, really happy to be able to um, connect again today at Connect um, and share some of our ideas with you all. So we're doing a little rewind here. You can kind of um, enjoy these pictures from <laughs> our um, are uh, really back in the olden days. Um, and why we're rewinding today is not that we don't love all of the things that are happening now in education um, and with Seesaw. Um, so many amazing updates, activities, um, adding in assessments, AI, um, everything is fantastic. But the reason we all started using technology in our classrooms, in our early learning classrooms, is because we felt um, it was so important for students to be able to be able to share their thinking and their learning by creating. And that's really what we want to focus on in our time with you today. Um, all of the amazing things that we can do now um, with technology and with Seesaw that we couldn't do back here in, you know, 1981, 1986, um, when we were um, um, the same age as the students we're working with um, because um, of the opportunities that we have now with technology. So um, we're just rewinding to be able to focus specifically on how we can use creation tools in Seesaw to really give our students that voice and choice. 
Um, so uh, we just presented um, at ISTE, which is pretty fun here in Colorado. The four of us have never been together in person, but uh, kind of why we're doing what we're doing is really just uh, choosing those appropriate platforms um, in the classroom and really allowing students to create and publish or present um, content that really shows their voice um, and creation and what they're doing. So I'll jump in here and this is our flashback. So when we started using Seesaw way back in the 2010s ish, uh, it was about 2015 when we started, when I started using Seesaw and we had these tools, which look a little bit similar to what we have now. Um, we didn't have activities. We didn't have uh, skills. We didn't have a lot of things, but this is what we began with. And so it's kind of fun to have this rewind with these ladies because we remember what it was like when it first began and what it's become. And it's kind of incredible for all of us to see the uh, growth of it. The reason why we love and still use Seesaw is obviously super easy to sign in on, simple to use the creative tools, clicking and having students have that choice to be able to pick how they're gonna show their learning. Um, growing portfolio of student work, which is amazing. The connection for families for me was life-changing in a building that had a lot of students that were EL and parents who didn't speak the same language that I did. Um, having that flip of being able to communicate with them changed the way that the parents were looking at the way that we teach here in the United States and the way that we can communicate back and forth. And of course, an authentic audience is always the best thing when a student knows their work is going to be shown um, with others. Uh, they, they take a little bit more pride in it. So that said, if you would like to play along with us today, you are more than welcome to jump onto your Seesaw accounts or create one for free if you need to. Um, we have a lot of goodies to share with you today. Um, please know that afterwards you will get the recording as well as a PDF of this, that you will have all the links available to you as well. So please don't be worried if you can't keep up with all of the things that we have for you. Um, that said, on the next slide, you're going to see um, what we're all so used to seeing, those great, wonderful, creative tools that Seesaw um, gives our students opportunities to use. And really, as it's already been mentioned before, um, that creation piece is so very, very critical to our students. So we're going to be, um, like I said already, sharing a lot of different ideas with you on how you can use these creative tools um, so that your students can do the creation and show what they know. Okay, so let's talk into about my favorite part of Seesaw, and that is cloning yourself, which life-changing when it comes to Seesaw. Um, we're so used to old school teaching where we're in front of the classroom and students are listening and we're talking and they're listening or not listening. And then we're checking for understanding. So once we get to the part where it's, I need to be in more place than one, this is where Seesaw became a game changer for me. Um, using that in all of my centers. So this first example is how I would just film myself in a math center. If it was an independent math center, and I use this mostly with my second graders, I would film myself playing the game, doing the center, whatever it was, so that if students needed to have a refresh of how to play the game, or maybe it's an introduction to a game, they could click on the video and they could watch it as many times as they needed to. What I did was I took my video and I turned it into a QR code and I would leave the QR code on the center so students could simply use their cameras in their iPads, which we were in iPad district at the time. Um, they would just click on the QR code and it would show the video. Again, they can rewind and fast forward to as many times as they needed to to be able to do that uh, center independently. That really stopped them from coming over to my maybe small group table and um, bothering me in the middle of my lesson. Same thing with the word work center. Um, the way that I did it was that we had a uh, sight words uh, section where I would um, copy some sight words. They would look at the videos, hear me read the sight words, then record themselves with sight words and any other kind of word work that you have going on. So it's a great way to have your body somewhere um, without having to be there in person. So it was really great and helpful. 
So this was my most important centers that I started that were became independent. Fluency and sight words can take the most time in your classroom. I would spend a whole time, a whole literacy block, and I would have to do fluency with 28 kids or however, however I had that year. So what I did was I started to make it an independent center. For Fluency Fridays, I had a binder that had all of the levels. And I think it was, we used reading A to Z. So there was levels A to Z. And they would be in um, a page protector like that in a binder. And there would be a list on the front part of the binder. The students would walk over to the binder and see what level they were supposed to read for the day. So let's say they were reading a passage from letter D. They would simply take a picture of the passage. They would hit the record button and they would go ahead and record themselves reading that fluency passage. They could do it one day. They could do it two days. I mean, two times. It was up to them. I gave them at least two tries to do it. So um, they would send those to me and then later on in the evening or the next day or whenever I had a plan time, I could listen to those on my own time and really not take up that time where I could be working with small groups. The other one was sight words. Um, same thing, taking a long time to go over those flashcards and things like that. And so I would take pictures of the, we use the fry sight words, and the students again would take a picture of whatever list they were on. They would record themselves. I would check. Now the way that I let them know whether they passed or not was in the comments. I would say, great job. You can move on to list number Z. Or I would say, let's try this again next week. And they would try their sight words again. So back and forth, it made it so much simpler for me to have this as an independent center and really freed up time for me to meet with students who really need my one-on-one -on -one, uh, time. Um, and another thing a lot like Sophia had just shared um, is an activity that I do with my students when we're working on heart words. Now, this is in second grade, but as a reading interventionist, um, before I would do this with letters or heart words or anything really that we're working on. Um, and I think, Tracy, can you hit play on that a minute? You'll get to see a little snippet of kids trying to beat the teacher. Maybe. Uh-oh. Um, so I don't think it's working right now, but that's okay. So um, essentially what you'll see up there is you'll see the students will see a word, a heart word that we've learned. And what they will do is they'll try and say it before I say it. So if they don't know it, they hear my voice. Um, but if they can beat me, their goal is to beat me. And within this activity that I do with students, then if they're ready to kind of test out of those words, that specific set of words, then they have in the activity a little checkout where they just go record themselves. And again, um, like Sophia said, I do just comment right below. I'll often either type a comment in or give a voice comment depending on what I'm doing. It also just allows the parents to see uh, what the students are doing and can, can check in on the words that they're working on at home. Um, so I think the other thing that I struggled with was I loved Seesaw, but then I was finding that I had 732 posts that I had to review. And I started to think this is great, but this is a lot for me. So I was doing a lot of it after school or on my own time. So what I started to do was this is in particular for a math lesson. Um, I had a word problem of the day and students would see the word problem. As you can see, there's a QR code, and I'll explain the QR codes in a little bit later on in our session. Um, and I would have a QR code so that the student would get that um, picture. We would take that picture. When they scan the second QR code, which is the black and white picture, that would be a student who may be working at a little bit of a higher level, they would record themselves showing and explaining their work so that students could check their own work to see if they got the answer and if they did the work correctly. If they didn't, they had another try to add a second screen and go ahead and retry the problem now that they had um, a bit of a tutorial on how to solve the problem. This helped me tremendously because I wasn't grading all of these. I could see their second work to see if they mastered it or if it was something that I needed to go back and reteach. So using Seesaw as a way to um, make it a little bit more independent, even in a math center, is a great way for you to kind of take a step back and let them do the learning. Okay, so now we're going to talk about QR codes because with the littles, I found this to be the easiest way to manage so many things in my classroom, as you can see. 
So it's really simple to create a QR code in Seesaw. There's two different ways, and there's a little graphic right there um, to show you how to do that. You could do it from the three dots. You go down, you can either do the print, and the print will give you the picture along with the QR code. And if you do it the other way, it's just going to give you a QR code. Now, with the QR code on the left-hand side, as you can see, it shows the picture from the, in the center of the QR code. And sometimes if you're giving an answer, it's probably not the best way to um, post a QR code. So sometimes going to the right and doing it as a print is an easier way. So I use QR codes in my classroom library. What I was finding was that I had a lot of students who um, had access to the iPads but didn't have access to other things possibly at home. Um, I'm talking back in the day when we had headphones and little cassette players and we had to rewind tapes and all that good stuff for our learning centers. So three different ways that I use in my classroom library is that student book reviews. So there's these really fun little plastic pockets in the Target dollar section and I know they're starting now so keep your eye out. Um, and what I do is I put that little pocket on the front of uh, books in my classroom library. And that first one is the student book review. Students are simply clicking the green plus button. They're doing a review of the book without giving any of the important details of the book. And then I put those reviews on the front of the book so that if a student is like, I'm not sure I'm gonna like this book, they can scan that QR code and see a book review automatically. The second one is um, the use YouTube as to create a read aloud. So in that green QR code at the bottom there, you see with Henry and Mudge, um, there are a lot of grandmas out there who love to read to their grandchildren at night on YouTube. And so what I do is I take that YouTube video, I make it into a QR code through Seesaw, and I put it on the front of the book. Now it's turned that book into a read aloud, um, read with a student. Um, so they just put it, you know, scan the code on their iPad, and then they put their headphones phones on and now they can read along with the um, person who's on YouTube doing that. And then the last one is what every primary teacher hates is when we have to do research projects and we have to find all of those sources that are kid friendly. So what I did is I took some nonfiction books as you can see this one was on caves and then I created a QR code with a link to a safe website or to a safe um, organization that gave more information about caves and now the students have absolutely two sources right away from using one book. Again, QR codes are amazing. Please use them. Um, what I did was I created a fake student in Seesaw and I would po host all of these QR codes in there so that I wouldn't lose them year after year after year and can continue to use them. So I hope that those three things helped you. I find QR codes for littles the best. And then here's just a few ideas you guys will see. Um, this was a pretty big idea that came um, to life two years ago with my new school and my new second graders is we were really exploring our culture and identity. And what we did was we took lots of activities that we had assigned in Seesaw where they were exploring their culture and their identity. And then we saved those QR codes um, on our desktop into separate folders. We printed those. And then you can see right here, students were able to put those on their body. And there's everything um, from the food um, that their family eats, family traditions, their culture and their identity of who they come from and where they are. And the cool thing is, is it wasn't always an activity. Sometimes it was a kid just posting something in Seesaw that we were able to pull a QR code from. And then what we did with these QR codes is we were able to create this museum. We called it Launch at the Louvre. And the students and the parents got to go around and scan the QR codes and have their little earbuds in and really just see what the students had worked on for two to three months. And then here's one more example. I have a few ideas. I have a wonder wall you can see there with a the thinking bubble where students can create a wonder and we put it up for a few months on a project they're working on. Uh, you'll see a timeline that my students created from Edward Tulane, which was a book where the character changes over time. At uh, the top right, you'll see a bunch of kids blowing a bubble and my students learned how to blow a piece um, of bubble gum and blow a bubble on their own. And they wrote a how-to piece and they shared that in Seesaw. And then we took the QR codes and just pasted them on there so that students walking the hallway and parents could see um, and hear their work. So this next idea, Robin kind of alluded to in one of her previous slides. And, and really, as we talk about the QR codes, there's two ways that you can obviously use them. 
Sophia mentioned using them so that you can get information to students, which is a phenomenal way to use them. But another way is for students to be able to share their work. So um, I have an amazing second grade team. Shout out, I think I actually saw Carrie in the chat today joining us. So hey, Carrie, um, this is an idea that um, we had used with a research project that they were doing. Their students had done some nonfiction research and created a book creator based on the animal that they chose. And then when they were finished with their book creator project, we uploaded it then into Seesaw so that they would have an authentic audience being able to share it with their parents. So that's phenomenal and the kids love sharing them with their parents, but the excitement of learning from each other goes even further. And so we took it to that next step and the teachers then printed off the QR codes. Um, our second grade hallway has lockers. And so as you can see here, we took those QR codes, we put them on the students lockers and then the kids did a gallery walk. It was phenomenal. It gave the kids the opportunity to get up out of their seats. They had active engagement. They had that authentic audience of going and seeing their peers work. Um, and it wasn't just one class. We have five second grade classrooms. And so we put them out in the entire hallway and students got to then learn not only from the kids in their own class, but from the students and their friends that were in other classes as well. It was a huge hit. It's amazing. Um, it was great for them to be able to share their work and then to be able to learn from each other, as I mentioned. Um, on this slide, we're not gonna spend a lot of time on this slide, but again, we wanted to give you some resources to be able to access afterwards. These are some additional um, ideas that you can do with QR codes. So when you have some time to go back and reflect um, and take a peek, take a closer look at this slide and see some of the other ideas. Again, just trying to give you some resources and, and pique some interest in ways that you can get your students creating and sharing their learning. And next we're gonna just talk about the drawing tool in um, Seesaw. And also I hope that you're noticing the amazing like song lyrics that are showing up here at the bottom um, of all these slides. See, this is the problem, we can't hear you laughing. So hopefully you're laughing and enjoying um, some of these references as well as learning today. Um, so I would say this drawing tool, just the pen tool in Seesaw is one of my favorite ways to have students show what they know. I think um, especially working with littles, these are some examples from very beginning of kindergarten. Um, it just is such an easy way, um, an entry point for them um, to be able to get used to using a digital tool um, and, you know, drawing to just kind of tell us about what they know. So um, these are a couple of examples. I really love this one. The one that has like the blue outline on it um, was one of my favorite ones because if you really look closely, the detail she put in her drawing to make it look exactly like what she was wearing um, was pretty amazing to me. And again, I think that transfers to then being able to really add those details um, to share um, some of her learning as well. So there's a few more examples in here. Those were kindergarten. Um, these are from second grade. I think this was from Mrs. Westrope's class if she's here. Um, I love how students can just kind of document, describe their learning. Um, they can draw, but then they can add their voice. They can add typing um, to that and really use all of these tools again to make it accessible um, to show their thinking. And then this last piece here is um, just adding those annotations on top of a photo, I think adds that extra level um, and layer of being able to think and reflect and be creative. Um, that top example there is probably one of my uh, favorite activities. We read um, that Mo Willems, um, The Pigeon um, Has to Go to School book. And then um, students are able to go around their classroom and take a picture of um, something in their classroom that the pigeon gets to do at school um, and then they get to add um, that drawing of the pigeon over top of it um, and it's such a, a fun way to um, again get students used to using all of those different tools in Seesaw um, to kind of showcase their favorite pieces of the classroom um, and um, share their learning. Passing it off. Okay thanks. <laughs> um, let's go back into literary liter literacy style. Holy cow. See, it's still summer break. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Sorry, you can't do two things at once. That's okay. Thanks, Tracy. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about vocabulary. When I'm in my small group, um, session with my smaller group of students, maybe three or four students. This is a great way for them to be able to do something right there and right then without you pulling out papers, pencils, all of that good stuff, which I'm totally for. But this is another great way to, to have um, vocabulary built into your lesson. So I just wanted to mention too that a lot of the things that we're doing are not activities. We love activities and we think that that's great, but this is just using the green plus button, which is my favorite, doing it just right there on the spot. There's no need for you to create anything. This is the student's creation and creation is the highest level of thinking for them. So here's this quick one. This is a book that they're reading. They're circling the bolded words, which are their vocabulary words. And then we're reviewing the definition. And what they're doing is they're simply just taking a text box and they're adding that to that page so that the next time that they have a question about that uh, vocabulary word, they can go back into their seesaw in their literacy reading group and they can look at the um, definition that they put down for each one of those words. We're talking about upping their comprehension and their fluency while we're also teaching as we go along. Uh, this is called a book snap. It was really big long ago. Um, everybody was talking about this and it's allowing students to have reactions to what's happening in the book at the time that they're reading it. So here's just a quick a screenshot or a picture of the book uh, page and they're ta we're talking about feelings and how do we know what the student is feeling um, or I'm sorry, the, what the character is feeling and how those feelings change throughout the book. We're underlining so that we have text evidence to show that. We have an emoji to show that we know that feeling and we're registering it when we're doing that with the reading group. And then the cool thing is, is if you, you guys really enjoy what your students are doing, you can also hit that print button and get that QR code and make a cute bulletin out of it or showcase um, some wow work for that student. Yeah, the top picture right here is when we were doing um, character traits. So we just simply, again, green plus button, take a picture of the character, and then students were adding uh, quick little words to explain the character of the, the story and their traits that they have. Um, and the bottom picture you guys will see was just a student. We were really working on character traits, but we were talking about, you know, what we are like on the inside. So I had students create an I am me poem. And this was a student who just popped up and added this in um, through an activity and just described herself, which was really cool to see. So this was just a quick little um, then and now picture. So this is how I used to teach um, informational text features. I used something that was called Padlet back in the day and we would um, take pictures of examples of the text features. So if there's bolded words or if there's the glossary or the title page, they would be clicking the pictures and they would be putting it into a Padlet. We'd take a screenshot and it would go to Seesaw. And then Tracy, if you'll click to the next screen, you'll see now I can create an activity in Seesaw that allows students to take pictures on multiple pages and show the informational text features that they're finding in a nonfiction book, in an informational textbook that is in uh, my classroom or for the lesson that we're working on. So things have changed really, really cool. Um, Padlet is not that basic anymore. It has expanded as well, and it's a very, very cool resource if you haven't checked it out. Awesome. Um, so I'm just going to pause before we dive into the next part and just kind of remind everyone, um, really our goal here is to spark lots of ideas. Um, so we're sharing so, so many, um, hopefully, exciting ideas from our classrooms or um, for those of us who support other teachers' classrooms that we've worked in. Um, our goal really is hoping you'll find one or two of these things that you're like, oh yeah, I really want to try this. Um, so hopefully not feeling overwhelmed, knowing you'll have all of these resources, you can kind of dive in and look a little bit more on your own later, but really just hoping we're sparking some ideas um, to get you to go back and um, create in your classrooms with Seesaw and um, really just give your students that ownership and autonomy over what they're doing. Um, so the camera is one of our favorite tools tools um, to use because it does really, I think, allow that peek into um, what students are doing um, and being able to share that outside of 
just the classroom. Like as a parent, this is probably one of my favorite things is just getting um, pictures of what was happening um, in the classroom or pictures of student work. Um, I know a lot of times we would make really cool, um, you know, art projects or craft projects or things. And I would wanna display those in my classroom. Um, but before we did that, students could take a little picture of that on Seesaw so that mom and dad and their family at home got to um, enjoy it as well. So the camera I think um, can be used in, in so many ways just to again, give that little peek of learning into the classroom. These are again, some second grade examples. I love that um, students are setting and tracking their goals. Um, um, they're doing this in a binder. You can see that they've got their, you know, their paper graph and they're tracking everything out. They're paying attention to um, their fluency goals and those types of things. But then um, they get to add this into Seesaw. And by putting it into Seesaw, they add that extra layer of reflection. So they're not just, you know, filling out the graph, putting the colors on there. Um, they're actually then having to kind of think about what does that mean? Um, so I'm going to take that picture and then turn the microphone on and then I can kind of share. These were my goals. Here's what I did. Here's what I'm going to do to um, continue to work toward that goal. So I love how it adds that extra layer of reflection. And like Sophia was saying, this could sometimes be a one-on-one -on -one conference which, with each of these students, which takes a lot of class time. Um, if they can record this and put it onto Seesaw now as a teacher, I can look at this um, during my prep time um, and listen to those goals and then help those um, students when, when we're back in class. This is another example um, of um, these students where I, I'll play it. I don't know if you guys are able to hear or not. Um, I think this one is just a, a no sound video, so that will work um, even better. Um, but just documenting this growth over time. Again, <clears throat> I love those things that you can't put into a backpack and send home with students. Um, I love that you're able to document it so they can look back and reflect on it, but we also get to share these types of learning experiences with families as well. Um, and I'm a second grade teacher, so uh, jumping back into reading intervention, but these were just snapshots from my classroom this year. These are kids who are proud of what they're doing. Some of this was during our bear huddle in the morning. Some of it was during fun Fridays. Students um, once a week would have to capture a math game for me. So you'll see that on the bottom left. Um, and really, these are just snapshots that I get to share with families and students get to share with families. And it really creates that authentic um, loop of really students getting to publish using that camera tool. And I love that Adam, when he was speaking this morning, said it was creation over conception. And the cool part is, is that most of the times my students surprise me with what they post. Yes, do I do activities? Yes, all the time. But it's just really fun to see what my students are capturing and doing in the classroom. Um, here's another one. You can um, document learning with that video tool as well. And we'll see if Tracy can push. Can you push play on that first one, Tracy? And you can hit pause now. So really, that one doesn't have a ton of sound, but it was a students who had made cards about a character and how that character had changed over time. So they made these trading cards, but then they were in the STEM lab and we were working and they wanted to use the Ozobot to tell the story of their character and record it. This was just a surprise to me, a video that they had posted on Seesaw. The other one is a video at the top right of my students using a flood table. Um, you can hit play on that, Tracy, for a second. So, um, the reason I love this video tool is because parents can see what we're doing at school, even when they're not there. Um, I'm also a Seesaw parent, so I get to see what my son's posting. So when he does have fun days where like the STEM team comes or he's doing something like a field trip and I can't be there, I do get to be those set of eyes on the outside seeing what my son does. And I really love um, just having that glimpses into his classroom. Okay, so we're gonna switch gears a little bit. And although I will admit the camera tool is probably my favorite as well, we don't wanna leave the microphone off because the microphone can also be an amazing tool for our students. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, I used to teach first grade. And for those of you that teach the littles, you know that we have those students that don't quite have that skill base yet 
to be able to share their learning through using the text tool or to maybe even, you know, write with the drawing, um, the drawing tools, etc. Um, and so podcasting is a fantastic way to really find out what our students know. So immediately when I think about podcasting, I start thinking about the podcast that we as adults listen to. And as you start thinking about that with littles, how in the world could you possibly do that with the littles? Um, but really, honestly, when we think about what a podcast is, it truly just is an audio recording. And typically there's some cover art that goes with it to just draw your attention in. And so this year at our school, we had kind of started to delve into what do we want our students do to be creators? And we really wanted them to have a large variety. And so we started talking about, we want our students to do podcasting. We want them to do drawings. We want them to do videos. We want them to have the exposure to create digital posters and slideshows and several other things as well. And so as you can see in the picture on the left-hand side, we created some visuals for teachers explaining and for students too, to be able to know um, what each of these tools was and what some different tools were that you could use to create these different um, digital media pieces. And so as you can see in the picture on the right, this is a first grader. They were learning about the sun and the moon. And again, just creating at a very, very basic level using the microphone, students went out and found a, an image of their choice. So thinking about digital etiquette, digital citizenship, we really have students taking that creation and doing it on their own. Um, obviously, there's some scaffolding that needs to take place with the littles. So we went out, we found images, they each chose what they wanted, they made that their background image. And then from there, they simply used the microphone tool to tell what they learned from that unit of study. So it was very, very simplistic. Um, for those students that weren't able to write and share their learning, this was a fantastic way for them to be able to do it and also then gives that engagement factor for them to have that authentic audience to be able to send that home and have that pride. Um, so again, give it a try. Um, with the kiddos, we even call it podcasting. It truly is. Um, but that's uh, thinking about vocabulary. It's what our students in this digital age know as well. So calling it a podcast kind of brings out a, that renewed excitement. Um, from there, we're going to kind of switch gears just a little bit. Um, as we all know, Seesaw is amazing and all of the creative tools that it offers us. But there are so many other tools out there that also help to have our students be uh, creators. And then Seesaw brings that platform into play to add onto it or to give students that authentic audience. So we're going to talk a little bit now about sharing creations from other apps. We really, with this section, are, are really encouraging you to find ways to amplify your students' voices. Um, amplifying student voice is so, so very important because it's a huge student engagement increaser. Um, and achievement has also been shown to increase through amplifying student voice as well. Um, I'm sure you've all done this. You've seen your students have that pride and that ownership. And it's a really great way to enhance your students' learning experiences as well with the content that you are working through. Um, so again, like I said, we're going to go through this area. We've got a ton of examples for you. We will talk through some of them, but not all of them, uh, because we do want to leave time at the end to also answer questions that you may have. Um, so thinking about that, I had mentioned Book Creator with the QR codes earlier. Um, thinking in that regard, anything that can be linked, for example, Canva presentations, or anything that can be saved to your camera roll on your device can be shared on Seesaw. So some of the examples that we're going to share with you, I think Tracy's going to start us out here. So I'm going to let Tracy take over for this section. Um, well, this was probably one of my favorite activities um, that we did. We did this near the end of the year. Um, I had been learning about AI. I don't know if you've heard anything about AI being a big deal in education right now. <laughs> um, and again, working with littles, I just hadn't really dipped my toe into um, using that with students yet. But I saw this wonderful idea from Holly Clark um, at the FATC conference and wanted to give it a try. So again, this was some second second graders um, using a free tool called Adobe Firefly. Um, the students basically just practiced creating really good descriptive um, prompts in the image generator to match 
character traits of some of our um, favorite stories that we have read. So we did this whole group first, and then um, students each got to pick their own favorite story and then um, use that image generator to make these characters. So hopefully without looking at um, the descriptions, you could kind of look and um, see right away who these characters are because they really did um, have to spend some time um, kind of reiterating, like put in a prompt, think about, oh, what might I be missing to make this look a little bit more like Pete the Cat? Maybe we have to give him his tennis shoes and maybe we put some music behind him because we know that Pete the Cat, that's really important. And so it was really great practice in um, not only thinking about those descriptive words um, for our characters to describe our characters, but um, figuring out how to really be explicit in um, generating some prompts for an AI generator as well. So. Um, loved this but again this is something that would have just sat on their device and nobody else would have been able to see um, without seesaw so um, after they generated these images um, i was able to show them how to download and save these onto their device and then once they uploaded it into seesaw again we get to add that extra layer um, they could have used the microphone um, because they were second grade i asked them to use the text tool um, we talked a little bit about that digital citizenship piece of then cre um, crediting um, that they did create this in an image generator. And so you'll see they said, you know, I made a character from the book if you give a mouse a cookie using Firefly. So just crediting what um, tool they had used in there. But I love that then we were all able to see each other's because they were on Seesaw. They could look at their classmates. Um, it was really um, a pretty fun experience. And then, um, you know, again, of course, their parents got to see it at home as well. So a very cool activity. And then um, for those of you that are specialists or even in the classroom, these are some samples I pulled from the classroom and from reading intervention that my students used. So these were app smashed with different things. My students at the top left there um, made a book bento box and they did that in Google Slides. My students were doing a Minecraft um, March challenge. They took a screenshot of what they were creating and posted that into Seesaw. Um, we did some dot day stuff with quiver and students were able to post that and get a picture and then right there balloons over broadway and google slides kids just creating um and having fun in the classroom and just to add a few more because there are just so very very many um, for those of you that are on Chromebooks, although this does work on iPad as well, our third graders were doing some biography research and we were trying to find some ways for students, again, to access those creation tools to share their research versus just writing a paper. Um, and so there is a site called wordart.com where our students went in and shared the character traits of the uh, person that they were studying for their biography. And then you can choose images to put their um, their words into. And so as you can see here, this happened to be Neil Armstrong and they chose the uh, picture of an earth and then the character traits were built into that image. Um, super duper easy way. We took a screenshot of it when we were done. And again, if you can do a screenshot, you can put it up into Seesaw. Um, Chatterpix down in the bottom left hand corner is a phenomenal and a super duper easy video creation tool that you can use. Students from K5 all, you know, all love it. Oh, looks like we're refreshing here. Oh, she's gonna play it for us. Yay, thank you, Tracy. Um, I'll let that play. And if you're not hearing it, I know it worked when we tested it earlier, but if you're not hearing it, our kindergarten students do chick hatching. And so at the end, they all went and took a picture of their favorite chick, put that into Chatterpix. You simply add a little line where you want the mouth to go and then students record whatever information it is that they're going to share. And it basically brings that image to life by having the image do the talking. So just a super fun way, uh, very engaging for our students. Um, up in the top, Padlet's been mentioned already. Padlet has a great feature where you can actually do a timeline. So our students that were doing biographies um, created a timeline by inserting images of their person's life. Um, it looks like we might be losing Sarah for a minute there. 
Um, so the middle one is um, doing green screen, which is amazing. Um, I believe this was a student talking about research and she did the background as um, th what topic it was. And then the student is standing in front of the green screen um, completing it. And then that is again, uploaded into Seesaw. Um, the bottom right hand corner, Sarah, are you back? Uh, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear wow. you now. Yay, that was a strange, weird glitch. <laughs> Um, the bottom one, um, pick collage, another great one if you are using iPads, just a phenomenal way for students to be able to create digital posters. Um, on the next slide, there are a few additional ones. Uh, somebody in the chat had mentioned that Padlet also does um, AI images. Yep, they sure do. And here's an example of one. Um, our first graders were using um, um, Padlet to create images that went along with stories that they were creating. So in this particular case, this student wanted to have a um, dinosaur that was playing hockey for the story that he was writing. Um, fantastic way, again, for students to be able to create images, um, especially if you're not somebody that can draw, which is which is me to a T. Um, Canva, yes, I had mentioned earlier that you can put Canva into Seesaw, and I also saw in the chat somebody was like, really, you can do that? Yep, you sure can. Um, when we did our um, research, we used the public view link when we shared it. We then took that public view link. That's what we put into Seesaw, made it super easy to share out with parents. So um, again, there's a, another pick collage example up in the top. And then if you've not heard of Stick Together, I encourage you to go and just kind of take a quick peek at it. I won't go into great detail right now, um, but it's another um, great way for students to actually use pixel art to be able to create images, which again, we then shared out with parents. Awesome, thanks, Sarah. Glad you glad you made it back. <laughs> um, so as we wrap up, one of the last things we wanted to share um, are just some ideas of anchor charts that support um, student learning. As we mentioned, most of us have spent um, most of our years in education with young students um, and just really know the benefit um, of providing just a lot of visual cues and reminders for our students um, just to be able to support them as they're um, working through different tasks. So these are um, just a a couple of examples. Seesaw has lots of great printables. Um, I really like starting with that Seesaw class pledge, especially with students who haven't used a digital portfolio platform a lot um, and interacting with one another and kind of knowing what types of things. Um, Robin talked about all the great surprise, you know, pictures and things that she gets on Seesaw, um, but they can also get a little out of hand sometimes um, if they don't have um, particular expectations for what kinds of things um, they can be sharing and how often they can be sharing and that sort of thing. So I think that class pledge is a really great way to just start having that conversation with your students. Um, over on the right, and I believe if you click that, I think I double checked it, if you click it, it should open up some printables um, that Seesaw created with all of those icons. Um, but that little pocket chart was from a kindergarten classroom that I visited, and I really loved how, um, you know, she just made it really clear, like, you're going to do this first, next, then, and last, here's how you're going to post what you're doing to um, Seesaw. I work with a lot of classes and a lot of times kindergarten teachers think that um, those littles can't use these digital tools and um, they can, we know that they can, um, but having these supports and kind of visual cues and reminders in place, I think really helps them be um, a little bit more independent with it after having some practice. So a couple of ideas and then um, Sophia will share um, about her tag idea as well. Um, so I went to college back in the 1900s, <laughs> as my children like to say. Um, and in 2016, I think it was at our first uh, Seesaw Connect when it was live and in person, um, I introduced tag to many audiences. Um, and so what it is, is it's a simple way to teach digital citizenship, especially when we're using Seesaw and having students um, comment on each other's work. So we use the acronym TAG, T-A-G. T is tell me something you liked. And um, the way that we explain this to students and to parents is that when you give somebody a heart, it doesn't tell you what 
they liked about it. They just say that they liked it. Um, giving more information. I like the way that you colored that. I like the way that you stayed in the lines. I like the way that you gave me more information um, is a great way to give feedback. The A is ask a question. So if you've seen somebody's work and you still have a question afterwards, you know, how did you create that? What did you use to create that? How does that work? Um, that's another way to give feedback to students so that they can um, give you a little bit more information. And then the G is give a suggestion. And I always talk about using the words, um, you know, how do you do this without offending somebody, giving a suggestion like, oh, I really didn't like the colors that you colored that in. Um, and just kind of taking that and using words that are appropriate so that a student can get feedback and then better their work. Because in the end, that's what feedback is about, getting feedback so that you can improve your work or to see that you're on the right track and that you're doing what you're going to be doing. So I think that I, I linked that poster. If I did not, I will go back into the slides and I will link it. Um, I have each letter individually, and then I also have this one that has all three together. Um, I also share this with parents at the beginning of the school year and say, I love that you love Seesaw, but giving just a heart is great, but here's another way that you can do it and giving them this simple way. We also try to do this with um, without using technology. So we do it on paper just so that they get used to those words that they're using um, consistently and constantly. And I think that that really helps with um, giving feedback and the reason why we teach digital citizenship. So this is what we really, sorry, Sarah, this is what we really wanted to drive home is that all of our examples are really about making sure that we are letting students show their creativity and do what they want to show us their learning. And sometimes as teachers, we get so um, blindsided, blinded by the way that students learn in a different way. And so using creation and using that green plus is probably what we all love most about Seesaw, as much as we love our activities and we love all of the lessons and things like that. Having the creative outlet for students to show their learning is really where you get a great um, picture of them as a whole student. And so I think that's really important to all four of us. That's kind of how we all started out. That's kind of how we all connected and how we continue to stay connected um, in, in sharing our passion about Seesaw. Uh, I think it's about time for a Q and A, um, but just a couple last slides. Um, if you have a copy of this, you'll have these links, but um, we purposefully didn't really show a lot of um, how to's. We really wanted to spark, um, you know, what, what if, what you can do with all of these things. So if you need to learn more, um, some websites here from Seesaw with some great resources for learning more. Um, and of course, our contact information. Um, we'd love to connect with all of you and answer questions um, that you might have. So um, be sure to reach out on um, X, I guess it's called now. But I'll embrace that. Um, and Instagram, you can find us as there. So, and and on that note, I will piggyback off of that, Tracy, to say that as we mentioned before, we all met on Twitter, now called X. Um, mm -hmm. But seriously, if you have any questions or wonders about anything that you've heard, please reach out to us. We all love connecting and we guarantee we will get back to you with answers for what you are still wondering. There are so many questions coming in and I've been <laughs> ferociously answering them as we have gone through this session. I think we have a couple of minutes to answer questions live, but we are going to do some giveaways at the end. So don't, don't duck out quite yet because we have a couple of uh, batches of seesaw gear um, Angela, do you mind? Do you mind if I jump in? I, there was just two questions that I know that all three of us kind of um, have an answer to. So one of them is called was asked like, how do you have multiple students record at the same time? And I know each one of us probably has a different way of doing that. So I'll just share one way that I used in my classroom. Um, I 
borrowed scholastic book fairs boxes that have that flap that stays connected and it gives you a little bit of an angle. I made it pretty by wrapping it with duct tape and the students would put their iPads or their Chromebooks inside the box so that when they were recording, it was almost like their own little sound system. Um, and that really helped keep other noise um, off of their recording. I know other teachers have different ways of, you know, using a whisper voice, using microphones, things like that. That was just one quick way I wanted to share. I saw that come up a few times. Uh, yeah, and I, I think just in general, we have a, a variety of levels of Seesaw knowledge that are here today. Some are just starting their Seesaw journey. So just to be really clear, you can record voice, you can record audio without having to add any sort of external microphone. Mm -hmm. Uh, to Seesaw. So if you're using an iPad or a phone or a Chromebook, those are things that will just, as soon as your students tap that mic, it's going to start recording. Um, I did share links to our Getting Started site and also teacher resources as well. So those would be a great place to go. I also shared inside the Seesaw library is a collection that introduces your students to the tools in Seesaw one at a time with a really short video. So that those are just a couple of things. I think we probably could spend an hour in just conversation about all the ideas shared. The good thing is that you will have access to all of the things that they shared in the handout. So you can grab that right now. Um, in terms of the questions to address here, I think, um, Olivia is just asking in general, I think she's just getting started with Seesaw. Did you find it challenging initially when you started documenting and would you forget to document? Initially, did it feel like a lot of work? Uh, Robin, do you want to start the answer to this one? Um, yeah, I was actually the only teacher in my school using uh, Seesaw Free when I had started <laughs> using it. Now my district's using it. And it was at first, but I just really focused when I was around. My kids just logged in and hit the green plus. Um, so my goal was, do they share one piece of work each week? Or, you know, um, I don't have a specific fluency day in second grade. They just have to do a fluency share one time a week. So really, I would just say, don't overthink it. Um, a lot of times I took great pictures of what my kids were doing in the classroom. And then it was just me posting to the parents and the families of things we were doing. Go slow Start to go fast. Yeah. Exactly. Start simple, right? Exactly. Yeah. I think that was just and, and I'll say you'll be surprised because like everything when Seesaw had started, my son was four. Now he's in fourth grade. Um, my, my son does more and shows me more in Seesaw that I can do that I can't even do as a teacher. So you'll be surprised what the kiddos can do. Angela, can I jump in with one thing I saw in the chat as well? Yeah not specific to any of the activities necessarily, but somebody had asked how in the world do we do all these things and still teach to the standards? And I think the biggest thing to say here, and I think we would all agree with this, watch for the head nods, everybody, is that everything that we're showing you is revolving around the standards. So as we are teaching, everything that we are doing and all the examples that we've shared have to do with what we are teaching our kids and learning and are all integrated right in with our standards. They're not above and beyond or fluff. Great point. I love that. Uh, another one that I'm just seeing, I think, is is a typical reaction, I think, to some, some teachers that are just starting. They feel like maybe everyone has to have their own device to even touch Seesaw. If you're a classroom that doesn't have one-to-one -one devices. Mm -hmm. Sarah, do you want to talk about that for a moment? Because I know we've chatted a lot about having very limited devices. So maybe you right. can address that. So back in the day when I first started, I had two devices in my classroom. Um, so very simply, my students share it. Um, as you're taking pictures, they might be working with a partner to do that work. It might be that they're just taking turns to put that work up. But honest to goodness, you do not need to be one-to-one -to, -one to use Seesaw and for students to be able to share their learning with that authentic audience, you just need to find that way to manage it and make it work with minimal devices. But it is very, very doable. And I'm going to hop in. There's there's so much more we can talk about. And if you're if you are on Facebook and go to the Seesaw Teachers Facebook group, there is so much conversation that you can have there and questions that you can uh, ask or share. What you've already done is a great place to go and continue to interact. So you will be emailed a certificate. Uh, 
for attending this session. So keep a lookout for that. As I mentioned at the beginning, we are gamifying this experience at Seesaw Connect. So you can earn points towards prizes. But in a moment, guess what? I am actually going to launch our giveaway for this session. So I am going to get started right now. And we are going to spin this and see who our two winners are for this session. Yay. I know. It's just like, ooh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. And dispense. Okay. So Lisa and Nikki, you are our winners for this session. How amazing. I'm just going to capture that. In about a week, we will connect with you. We, you will get an email from us if you are one of the winners. So there's nothing you need to do right now uh, to claim that Seesaw gear. Yay, yay, yay. So exciting. But for all of you that are here, thank you so much for joining us. There's so much to still interact with. Check out the leaderboard. Check out the networking tab. That's where you're going to find the leaderboard. And so many more sessions are happening over the next day and a half. So we so appreciate all of our presenters, Tracy, Rob, and Sarah, and Sophia, as always so inspirational. And we can't wait to see everyone in the next session. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.